Aloha, this is Bill Best with On Exhibit. And we are on Front Street in Lahaina for Art Night in Lahaina. And uh, some wonderful galleries in Lahaina, very inspiring. We're going to talk with Vladimir Kush at the Vladimir Kush Galleries and a few others. So I hope you'll join me for On Exhibit with Bill Best. Maui Live Show is proud to present On Exhibit with Bill Best. The Valley Isle of Maui is one of the world's best places to find the most renowned artists in the world. On Exhibit with Bill Best is Maui's premier TV show that showcases the art and artists of Maui. If you love art, you will love On Exhibit with Bill Best. Each month we present shows introducing you to the Valley Isle's most talented and creative artists and the marvelous art that has made Maui the world's center for fine art. So sit back and relax and get to know the art and artists of Maui. Welcome to On Exhibit with Bill Best. Thank you so much for joining us for On Exhibit with me, Bill Best. And we are very excited about this program. This is uh, the uh, beginning of a, an entire series of shows on some of the artists, the uh, workshops and displays and exhibits on the Valley Isle. And it's extraordinary. And I hope you'll join us for each and every episode. We're in the Kush Fine Galleries, and uh, Vlad Kush, Vladimir, it's wonderful to meet you. Welcome. I was here a couple, three or four weeks ago, and came into your gallery. I'd never seen your work before, and was just amazed by this huge volume of just gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. And uh, you, you don't seem old enough to have created such a, a great volume of work. Uh, it's, it's really something to see, and uh, I, all I can do is congratulate you and tell you, I, you know, it's very inspiring. It's beyond the average uh, artwork that we see in many galleries these days. Uh, in Front Street or in uh, anywhere, everywhere? Anywhere. <laughs> I've, I've been to Europe, I've seen work there, it's true. and a lot of contemporary work which I just don't get. but. Uh, your work, uh, now some people might call it surrealism, but you don't. No, I don't. Uh, no. uh, it's all based on uh, metaphors, and uh, that's what we work with, because every word, uh, you know, metaphor is normally a linguistic right. notion. Yeah. So that comes from linguistic area of our life. But uh, here we see those, uh, those metaphors uh, coming to life on two, di two dimension uh, or on the canvases or in three-dimensional sculptures or even jewelry. So right. this is a... Uh, and you is, do it all. This is totally new brand yeah. uh, in art. So that's why diversity of the things that you could see in this gallery or in, in our, of our galleries in Las Vegas or Laguna Beach, uh, it's uh, pretty uh, vast. It I is, mean, quite so. Yeah. And this is your first gallery, actually, uh, that first you opened. historical. Uh, uh, yes. All the way from Russia, and you come to Maui and open up your first gallery. How did that work? It's not like I just came out of Russia <laughs> and opened up the gallery. This doesn't just work got on like the this. Plane and opened up. But I made my way step by step towards <laughs> that by painting portraits on the street. Yeah. And you used it to was do caricatures. Was, yeah, no, not yeah. caricatures, but you know, Actual, really, uh, really, uh, oh, really portraits of people, you know, especially huh. honeymooners that yeah. come to the island. On, in oil at the time? Oh, it's oil, it's black oil paint on the paper, on the uh -huh. watercolor paper. Oh, okay. So, an interesting thing, when I would, did these portraits of uh, honeymooners, they would always ask me to put them on the both, on the, on the same page. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And what I would tell them is like, uh, let me leave a little bit of space between you, you know? So, if, if it doesn't work out, you can always cut it in half, <laughs> so you can have it separate. It. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Cut it in half and I think they know. didn't understand me because they were madly in love at that time. Yeah? <laughs> but, uh, many of them, I, I think, they remembered me and gratefully. You have a lot of romance in your work. Uh, you have a, 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 a little sculpture that uh, yeah. is of, uh, yeah. scissors. Yeah. We have a whole chapter in this book, Metaphorical Journey, that's called The Love and the Two. So it's, uh, it deals with this yin and yang, you know, with the uh, with two big beginnings, so with two, uh, with, uh, with two 
entities. Couples, yeah. Uh, well, you female. See that, you see that in this this painting here, which uh, is uh, as female and male origin. So yeah. uh, you know it's androgen. In my painting, uh, 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 always together, the scissors. The scissors. It's two yes. parts of them. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's a part of that uh, ma matrix of love. Yeah. So that's where we have uh, the Caesars rem reminded a lot of uh, of androgen from ancient Greece. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, when Zeus was angry, that's when he divided them. Uh, that Z uh, androgen, uh -huh. which combined at that time both female and male origin, oh, yeah, into sure. two parts. Yeah. That's where that expression came into being. I'm looking for the other half. It's like half of the scissor. Well, is a half of scissor a sizz? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't know these things. Yeah. Yeah. So you actually had tremendous schooling. I mean, when you started out in Russia, you went to yeah. uh, the University uh, Moscow High Art and Craft School. It's uh, yeah, that's at seventeen. Uh, at seventeen, I uh, entered it, and then I was there for five years. Yeah. And how do you think is, what, what do you think the difference is between uh, the way America supports its artists and the way Russia supports it, it, its artists? Well, my life divided in two parts. You know, the time when I grew up in Soviet Union, where there was a union of artists that supported uh, artists a lot. Uh -huh. So to become an artist, it was a really, uh, you know, great proposition in life, you know, to become an artist. Because your life is all set yeah. for oh, yeah. you for for a long time. See, these are things we they would get. They would get understand. a studio from the state. They oh, would really? get uh, some commissions. A couple of commissions will pay for the whole entire salary of average salary in Russia. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, when uh, the Soviet Union collapsed, all that came to the end. So it's n uh, now it's not uh, a popular. Not profession as, anymore. Not as supportive of, yeah, of artists. So, yeah. And the state does not support artists. I, I don't even know anyone from my schools, you know, who are very good crafts, craftsmen and professionals. As in good art. as you. Yeah, yeah they, could, they could paint like this. Right. They are not even artists mm -hmm. anymore. Well, we see artists they all are the time who are struggling here. And uh, on Maui, we have a number of just great artists who are always struggling to make ends yeah. meet. And you started out doing portraits, and you actually did portraits uh, when you came to uh, L.A. You started doing some portraits there, and that kind of got things rolling. And uh, at some point, was it 1987 or at some point, you, uh, things just exploded for you. It was 1989, I would say. That's when I uh, made a first series of the works that um, kind of deal with this, uh, the theme, but it was developing for another 10 years till 1998, when I finally did the series of works like uh, Nero, like Music of the Woods, like Candle, uh, which when I brought them here and this displayed on Front Street in that gallery down the street, uh, it changed everybody. Here. When you came to Maui? Well, no, that was way after I came to Maui. Uh -huh. It was a lot, a really? long time that I was, I was painting landscapes here and trying to sell them through the galleries and, and I did portraits and uh, the galleries here on the front street, they were not very receptive. I was really? bringing to one of the galleries here, uh, one of my work that in that style, and they would say, "Well, you should better start painting whales and dolphins." What is this kind of distorted? I don't think we can. I don't think we can ever sell that. <laughs> well, there were there were other people here on the street. I mean, I'm, I'm avoid, avoiding the names, but they would they would get the the, the piece like uh, extremely popular one like purse, and I would bring them the, the original, uh, let them hold it literally the original when I painted this, and these people will turn me down. They would not want to exhibit my work. And then uh, just uh, maybe three months later, they would come to me and say, if you're not happy here, please come talk to me. Because that purse, that every print of that has been selling every day. 
they even had a saying in the gallery on the corner there. One person a day keeps the doctor away. Ah. <laughs> <So> that, <laughs> every sales consultant knew that when they come to work, they would sell one, one piece, uh, one of those purses. Well, now, Gicle has really kind of helped you expand your work tremendously. Sure. And, uh, and not just you, but many, many artists. You, walked, you also did work at uh, Whaler's Village, isn't that right? Did uh, some mural work? Yeah, yeah I did uh, some, uh, the Whale Museum. There was a whale museum, the whale for, museum for quite a few years, yeah. and I did all the paintings for them. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was many, a lot of scenery with whales and uh, sperm whale and squid and, <laughs> the, and prehistorical whale. Yeah. I studied that uh, with uh, the Museum of uh, Paleontology. It's an easy LA. shape. It's just pretty much a big <laughs> log. <laughs> just fill it in and uh. put a... I, I used to have a, a shop on Front Street here years and years and years ago, back in the 70s, where I did all airbrush work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I probably did several thousand whales on shirts. You know, yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, the, uh, the, the e whale is easy to paint for the people who don't need to, hi they don't need to show their skill, really. I mean, this is... Well, it's whale. an easy shape. It's just it's about... <laughs> It's, it's not like a nude, you know, the human nude, you know. Yeah, exactly. the whale, whale nude is different. <laughs> the new, yeah, the new whale studies now, that's going to be good. But I don't see any whales in your paintings here no, anymore. There's one, by the way, right there. Oh, there <laughs> is, yes. Yes, Jumping I see over there. In the usual combination. But it must have been inspiring to come here first and, and just see the beauty of Maui. And uh, I did that. Was that what led you to want to open up a gallery here before any other? Uh, it's like uh, coming here was like a destiny. I was painting portraits in Moscow. That's when I met this uh, American diplomats who wanted me to come and, uh, and do their portraits in, uh, in the embassy. And I was working with them until uh, KGB at that time chased me away from them. Oh, wow. really? <laughs> And then, uh, mm, uh, but I still got, uh, you know, uh, invitation from them to visit. And uh, there was somebody I met, uh, I did portrait of from Maui. That's when I came here in 1989. Uh, no, uh, yeah, 1989, first time. And that's when I set up uh, the first day uh, in Kihi, I burned up myself real bad. So oh. I, uh, next, next day, I just came out with my easel onto yeah. the beach on the uh -huh. one in Kihi, set up the easel right in the parking lot and started to do portraits. And at that time, nobody knew any Russians ever because they just started to come out because the borders just, you know, it just I've, I've up. never known a Russian. So I had I've a had some real vodka though from yeah, Kiev. So yeah. Different from anything <laughs> I've ever had. Oh, it's <laughs> like a vapor, it's crazy. So at that time, uh, there was, it was just moment of revelation. I met a lot of people, and uh, that's when I decided that I have to move. In '91, I, after graduation, that's when I immediately took off. <laughs> well, your work is so fantastic, and uh, to me, it, it, of course, for probably a lot of people, it would remind them a little bit of Dali, and uh, Bosch maybe a little bit, and uh, Magritte. <laughs> what, who are some of? I imagine those inspired you a bit. But, uh. Well, Dali's work I have seen uh, too late. I think I was about 23, and, th and that's the first book that was sent to me by those diplomats oh, from the really? U.S. Embassy uh -huh. in Moscow, so from U.S. diplomats. Uh, so I was already doing this in this style, but uh, mostly inspired by uh, Euronymous Bosch, Things right. like this. So it was. It was things that I at least saw or studied at school. But uh, uh, Bosch is so much more grotesque. Oh yeah, than yeah the no, work no, that it's, you do. It's allegory. Yeah. yeah, allegory. Dali is classical surrealist. So I don't associate uh, with uh, surrealism because my art is pointed at the human, en enlightening the human soul. Like uh, like that's a light for the souls, sort of. So showing that point of revelation somewhere which is different than uh, classical surrealism. Yeah. Well, there's magic. There's a uh, little mysticism in there. Um, what was the other word? Metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed that you use some uh, 
things in your paintings and in your sculptures. You've got the the wonderful elephant with the uh, with the, the tuba. With the tuba, yeah. Uh, and you've had that in a couple of your paintings. Because we say that in everyday language, the the elephant is trumpeting. Here you go. It's a it's a directly metaphor right there in in linguistic yeah. metaphor becomes the visual metaphor. Now you have a peacock here, yeah. and uh, I, at first I didn't realize that every one of the feathers has a couple. It's a Ferris wheel, which depicts also uh, another uh, you know South uh, South American mythology, which is uh, you know when we come through the steps of life, we uh, we go through the step of. Uh, a snake when we crawl as a kid, and then we have a puma that runs, and then the bird. And the bird in many different cultures, including even South American or European, associated with the human soul. So when we're in that state as a human soul, uh, free to hover, yeah, so that's in, a, in the tail, you could see the people that took that ride, finally. And their destiny, it's a wheel of destiny. And their destiny is already written here in the uh, Aztec symbols and zodiac signs. So, do you believe in reincarnation? Uh, the wheel of I, life continues. I, I think that you know I am I'm picturing different uh, mythologies from all over the world, and uh, what uh, my goal is to give the light to the people's soul yeah. in different ways. Well, you so did. it's not. Oh, it's yeah. And, uh, uh, it's inspiring. I call what I do is uh, metaphorical realism because it's realistic by its uh, how it's done, but it's uh, metaphorical by its essence. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most brief and clear uh, formula that I ever heard was by Plato. He said, uh, "Oh, no, not Plato. Plato was was describing." Uh, the cave where we go for the ideas. We'll go to that later. Uh -huh. But Aristotle uh, has described uh, metaphor as uh, intuitive perception of likeness in the things that are different. Oh, I see. So yeah. You find uh -huh. the likeness in the things that uh, seems to be impossible to connect. And then they get connected, and that's a miracle. It's like building a bridge, according to yeah. uh, Jorge Borges. Well, a good right. example of that would be uh, this piece here yeah. with the, uh, the butterflies and uh, the, the, yeah, the land windows. of Cervantes. <laughs> and uh, that must be uh, 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 Don Quixote down yeah, there? Yeah, Don Quixote, yes. Uh, instead, of, instead of fighting with the windmills, giant windmills, he's finally trying to catch the symbols of beauty. But of course, the beauty is uh, very evasive. But the creative process would be best illustrated what I go through when I do any painting would be illustrated through this piece actually uh -huh. that is right here it's called green apple it's a basic idea when it comes to you it's a, it's like this caterpillar uh -huh. but uh, when it goes inside of that apple it makes a very complicated route in there like, and the more complicated it is the more beautiful are the wings of the butterfly when it comes out. Is that right? Hmm. But it's invisible. So it takes a lot of efforts to make it look effortless. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Whatever is happening inside is invisible. Is so there's always a uh, mystery to that creative process. We will never know for sure how these ideas are born. One of the r famous Russian artists, by the way, uh, when somebody asked him, some reporter said, like, oh, is there a formula for the ideas for this success? I said, well, if there was a formula, then everybody else can do that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. always a hidden part right. that's what inside of that apple. Like, I can show you uh, the sketches uh, that I just did for uh, the right. new book. Because the new book, after that metaphorical journey book. Yeah, let's take a look at this uh, uh, metaphorical journey. That's already a 10-year-old book. And all the paintings that uh, were done after that will be in a book, in the new book, that will have two volumes now, not just one. This book contains about 350 paintings. It's just gorgeous. And we're going to have even more in the, in the new volumes. And this is uh, the drawings, like j just the same way how I do the 
black and white drawings mm -hmm. here on the side. These are the drawings that I started to do uh, that become, uh, that will be the secondary <laughs> drawings in each page. So it's a lot of whimsy in your work too, yeah. the guy on the pipe. And, uh, and that's how it works. Like, like this one uh, is uh, uh, when the god uh, turns on the sun, god electrician. Oh, okay. I just finished that original. By the way, after that sketch, I started and finished the original. I just brought it in for them to look at. Do you uh, always do sketches like this before you do the final work? Yes, at the most part, yes, uh, of course. And uh, But there uh, could be a real great distance between the sketch and the final painting. So you might do more than one sketch then? A as Dali said, by the way, he said, uh, if the, the artist knows everything what's going to be on the painting, might as well not paint it, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he didn't take his advice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not quite the same. See, uh, no. see, it turned into the light bulb. Yeah, and he's so he's it's more like uh, emphasize on on the fact that the God appears in different guises, and sometimes it appears in the guise of a, of an electrician. Of a, it's his studio. Right. So he, he gets up and is like, okay, the light is not working. You know, where's the sun? And he turns on the light. And that's why the title of that piece is Let It Be the Light. I think your artwork is your religion. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I deal with the concepts that are hard to capture in, uh, with, uh, by just defining it in a couple of words, like uh, time mm -hmm. or love. So love is like a love. Love could be of different shapes too. Yeah? So it could be moments of love. Well, how can you describe love just by uh, showing some moments, some happy moments of it, right? Yeah. All together is like a matrix, consists of many different things. All together, they will make up for the notion, right? Yeah. Itself. Your website it, it really uh, should be seen if you can't make it to the gallery here on Franz Reader and at your other galleries. Uh, Kush Fine Art. Kush Fine Art. Your, yes. your gallery, uh, your website. And there's, uh, there's even a little film. I'm a kind of a gamer, video game guy. And uh, I'm always hoping that somebody will come out with something brilliant in, in the way of games and not just to shoot them up. And uh, once in a while, people do. And so it was a pleasure to kind of, in a way, immerse myself in your work with this little video on his, on his website that you should uh, check out. Any chance you'll ever do a game? <laughs> we need brilliant uh, minds on these things. Mm -hmm. And it would be marvelous to be in, in the world that you've created. Uh, but here it is. Well, it's, uh, what we do it deals with different aspects of life, of course. Uh, oh, another uh, one more metaphor is like, uh, stop the moment, you are beautiful, said uh, Wolfgang Goethe. It's a uh, and that's the uh, stopped moment. Yeah. So when the pendulum comes back, pendulum. it just will show a different moment. So that's right. that's never going to be repeated again. It's just uh, fascinating. So it's just a moment. It's, it's the kind of work too that you could live with and just keep gaining more insight into over time. And a lot of work in the art world is pretty much oh, it's a nice little scene, and that's decorative. It. Decorative, right. yes. Right. Well, this is beyond decorative, that's for oh, sure. Y you know, uh, there's uh, one uh, contemporary philosopher, Jose Ortega y Gasset, who wrote about the contemporary art. And he said that uh, most of average mind us usually likes to collect at home something that they can associate directly with. You know, like let's say if they, if they buy a landscape, it's, it's going to be a landscape that they want to be in mm -hmm. themselves. It's kind of consumer's sort of art. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, attitude. <laughs> yeah, I see that. <laughs> or if uh, it's going to be a, a still life, it's some a still life that he wants to have. Uh, that person wants to have on his table, on his table. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, real art has nothing to do with that consuming. You know, it's more like a light for the souls. Like I, I just wish that the whole world was like your artwork, and <laughs> we could just we could live in. Uh, uh, Cush city, if you will, <laughs> a beautiful Cush city world. that's just vibrant and gorgeous. Yeah, make this kind of glasses that you just, yeah, and then <laughs> and then live inside there, just yeah. in the new, in different reality. Don't that's bother right. me. I'm in the world of Cush. <laughs> Vlad, tell us about this piece. 
this this one is called uh, Diary of Discoveries. Uh, on the foreground, you, you could see the book, and the book, according to Plato, is a symbol of a human uh, spirit, because it reveals uh, imagination. It's a book. Book could be s uh, a diary of uh, human life. It could be maps uh, and atlases we travel through through the throughout the lifetime. Um, or it could be novels, uh, literature, it could be poetry that evokes imagination too. But at the point where it turns into the bird, it, uh, th this point is called point of revelation. Mm. That's where it turns into. Point of revelation. And that's uh, the bird. Uh, due to its weightlessness and ability to fly, mm -hmm. is also a human s a symbol of a human spirit. Of course, you work in oils, but once you've done a piece, you often have it uh, printed w with the gicle process, and uh, it must be a gigantic file to be able to to duplicate something like this and then print it. Yes, of course, uh, is it has to be professionally shot by uh, using a special scanner or a camera that will create the file and then uh, uh, and then uh, the print then of course there's a lot of color correction process do you hunt uh, I personally don't no. but I know b a lot of hunters do you? and I uh, so that's I the kind that's of uh, that's the story kind of behind that's the story of the hunter piece. that goes through the forest in search of that uh, the animal the deer he doesn't see the deer because he's uh, all what he has in his mind is the trophy the trophy he's obscured his vision obscured all the universal values of this world are distorted in his mind because he doesn't see the beauty surrounding him yeah. because it ju it's only the trophy that's uh, that fills up his mind well, this is a wonderful piece and, and uh, uh, it's a this is one of your newer Yes. Works. Yes, that's one of the news. How long does it take you to to, to do these incredibly detailed pieces? Uh, this, you know, uh, sometimes I'm preparing for that for years. Really? So uh, the uh -huh. sketching and all that goes, and then I'll put it aside, and then uh, I can paint pretty fast. But this one, uh, of course, because of the large size, it will take just physically a lot of a lot of labor. Oh yeah. Right, so. yeah. Well, it's fabulous, and thank so you. So the, the yeah. hunter does not see the majestic deer, how beautiful he is, but there's always a hope because there's a light, a light of hope, that he will see uh, the, uh, the light, uh, the forest behind the trees. The because forest that's behind a, the trees. That's a rephrase of the famous right. expression, right? To see, uh, not, not to see the forest behind the trees. Do you feel that if a tree does fall and nobody's around, you can't? It's no sound. There's no sound. They, people say that, but <laughs> how could you prove it? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're talking with Vladimir Kush at uh, Kush Fine Art on Front Street in Lahaina as part of Art Night in Lahaina. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for being with us on Maui Live Show's On Exhibit with Bill Best, showcasing the most renowned artists in the world who live and create art right here on Maui. On Exhibit with Bill Best is Maui's premier TV show. You can find On Exhibit with Bill Best online at MauiLiveShow.com, where you can view past shows along with many other TV and radio productions. Thanks for allowing us to introduce you to the Valley Isle's most talented and creative artists and the marvelous art that has made Maui the world's center for fine art. See you next time for On Exhibit with Bill Best.